Please rise as you are able for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now proceed with our awards and recognitions. Mrs. Manning. The school board is proud to recognize six students who earned Virginia High School League state, state wrestling titles, and I was honored to, to watch most of these young men compete. Let's meet, meet them. Salem High School senior Anthony New. An Anthony won the 2017 and 2018 state championships in the class five, 126 pound weight classification. This two time state champion whose record is 163 wins and only 10 losses, accepted a full wrestling scholarship from the Citadel Military College in South Carolina. Congratulations, Anthony. Next is Princess Anne High School junior Joshua Crandall. He is the class five champion in the 138 pound classification. In addition to several top five finishes during the season, Joshua went undefeated in postseason and won the conference, region, and state tournaments. Congratulations. Next are VHSL Class 6 champions, Riley Parker, junior at First Colonial High School and 106-pound state champion. Riley finished the season undefeated with 28 wins and zero losses. He also competes as part of the Virginia National Wrestling Team and recently won the Northeast Regionals. Congratulations, Riley. Bryce Sanderlin, 126 pounds state champion from Lansdowne High School. As a freshman last year, he finished second at the state championship. This year, however, he won the state title and is on a winning streak with an overall two-year record of 70 wins and only nine losses. Congratulations, Bryce. <laughs> We're going to call Ta Tallwood High School's Stephen Rosero and Pedro Dejar together. Both of them are team captains, and their wins made them the school's first wrestling champion since 2001. Stephen is the 145-pound champion. He had many top 10 finishes at tournaments and also volunteers with Brandon Middle School's wrestling team. Pedro is the 195-pound champion and won in an exciting ultimate tiebreaker, which in wrestling is the third and final overtime. Please join me in congratula congratulating these state champions. Imagine only having four hours to create an animated 3D video. This is the challenge that our new, that our next two honorees, Savannah Smith and Roy Rector, faced. These Advanced Technology Center, or ATC students, won first place as a team at the recent Skills USA competition in the 3D visual visualization and animation event. That event is intended to give students a glimpse of the rapidly expanding field of 3D animation. After passing the written exam, they had just four hours to produce a high quality computerized 3D images along with a compelling story and blend it all together into a video using industry software. It's truly amazing. Congratulations on your first place win. Future Business Leaders of American First Place winners. Our next honorees are also ATC students. They earned two state awards at the recent Future Business Leaders <clears throat> of America State Competition. First, Connor Rose, an ATC Network Administrator and Cybersecurity student, earned first place in the Electronic Career Portfolio event.
His resume had to demonstrate education related to his career goals as well as mm -hmm. participation in job shadowing, internship or apprenticeships opportunities that enhance his employability. His portfolio has also to include samples of his cybersecurity accomplishment. Well done, Connor Rose. <laughs> next, next, the team of Brian Hollow, Nor Montalbano, and Justin AC earned a first place team award for web design and development. They created an employment advice website called Impress for Success that offers candidates tips for finding jobs op openings, writing cover letters and resumes, completing impressive application, dressing appropriately, and succeeding in various types of interviews. Congratulations to all three of you. Our next recognition is for rising seniors who demonstrated exceptional academic achievement and have been named Class of 2019 Brickell Scholars. Let's meet them. From Bayside High School, Alicia Simmons and Ethan Lee. From Cox High School, Mackenzie Wall and Philip Goldstein. From First Colonial High School, Andy Pember and Kaysen Wilburn. From Green Run High School, Kaya Wise and George Kahn III. From Green Run Collegiate, Anna Valverde. From Kellum High School, Drayden Wedertz and William Butler. William is unable to join us this evening. From Kempsville High School, Aaliyah Berry and Nathan Forehand. From Lansdowne High School, Carly Daniel and Gabriel Ferran. From Ocean Lakes High School, Keanu Rich and Joshua Fegert. From Princess Anne High School, Blamika Chowdhury and Joseph Warnham. From Salem High School, Anika Sun and Ryan Hansen. And from Tallwood High School, Abigail Martin and Mimi True. This scholarship program is sponsored by the Virginia Beach Rotary Club and named for longtime former superintendent, Dr. Edward E. Brickell. During their senior year, these students will participate in seminars covering a wide range of current issues where they will meet industry experts and network with Brickell scholars from other schools. As the at the conclusion of their senior year, one student from this impressive group is awarded the Brickell Scholarship. Who will that honoree be next year? We will find out next year. Congratulations, <laughs> class of 2019. Brickle Scholarship recipient. You just met the newest class of Brickle Scholars. Let's now meet this year's 2018 Brickle Scholarship recipient, Curtis Brown Jr. from Green Run High School. <laughs> Curtis has a grade point average well above 4.0. 
is enrolled in numerous advanced placement classes and is also a National Honor Society member, member of Green Run's NJ ROTC National Championship Unit, where he serves as the administration's officer and senior class leader. Virginia All-State State Delegate, 2017 AP Environmental Science Student of the Year, member of the Principal's Advisory Board, a member of the band and cross-country teams, and the list goes on. <laughs> he also volunteers as a lead youth teacher through his church where he is responsible for coordinating activities with other teachers and ensuring that classes for children ages three through five run smoothly. Since 2012, he has also volunteered in Special Olympics and Relay for Life. Prior to that, he also served at a homeless shelter, serving lunch, and at an elementary school in classrooms as a mentor. As this year's honoree, he will receive a Rotary Club scholarship of $6,000. He also has accepted an appointment to the United States Naval Academy. And you just join me in congratulating our 2018 <laughs> Brickell Scholarship Award recipient. Let's give him another hand. Well deserved. Congratulations. Miss Chairwoman, this concludes our recognitions. Dr. Spence, we look forward to hearing the superintendent's report. <clears throat> Thank you and good evening, Madam Chairwoman and members of the board. As you know, as a part of Compass to 2020, we talk at great lengths in goal number three about the work we can do to support the emotional development of our students. That work involves a wide variety of things, including teaching interpersonal skills, responsible decision-making, and resilience, as well as showcasing for our students what it looks like to be an involved and engaged member of their school and wider community. We want to ensure that we are modeling for our students what true service and leadership looks like. So tonight, you're going to meet a man who is revered in his building. Through his deeds and his actions, Student Activities Coordinator Randy Sparling positively impacts the lives of students and staff at Salem Middle School every day. In fact, he's a bit of a legend and a hero to his students, so when tragedy recently struck during a school field trip, no one was surprised at how he took action. Let's watch his amazing story. He opened this school. He is the figurehead of this community. Um, there isn't a time where I don't meet parents who were former students of Randy, uh, and they all know him, they all love him. Um, he is a big teddy bear, and he is very passionate about community and service. It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining. It was gorgeous. Uh, Mr. Sparling went over all the do's and don'ts of what you're supposed to do when you're out in public as a large group. We went, got on the buses, and uh, then the buses took off. And, you know, we were hopefully on our way to have a great day. <laughs> Um, I just heard a terrible noise and I saw some things flying across the windshield and I was sitting right behind Randy and I saw him jump up and run to the door like not even a second jump up at the door and I just heard him yell call 911. You could see the glass and plastic and stuff hurl hurtling towards the windshield of the bus and as I see all of this plastic and stuff come to the bus, Randy jumps up, opens the bus door, and he's out of the door within like seconds. It happened super fast, it was so fast, but um, Randy immediately was out of his seat. I saw something terrible happen. I knew because of the crash and, and the 
the extent of what was going on, I knew I had to get off that bus as soon as possible, and I did. The motorcycle hadn't even stopped because the motorcycle was still going across Indian Lakes Boulevard when, before I even got off, I mean, when I got off the bus, it was still rolling, and I looked, you know, at two o'clock, at my, my two o'clock, and the man was laying on the ground and he was bleeding profusely. I know if you don't stop the bleeding within four or five minutes, you're gonna bleed out. He uh, called for a belt, a tourniquet, and so, uh, Mary and I both were like pulling off our belts. I hollered back onto the bus and said I need a belt and all of a sudden belts come flying at me. It seemed like forever but it wasn't. I believe um, I had the bleeding stopped in less than two minutes. I've been trained to in first aid and through Boy Scouts. I'm an Eagle Scout myself and been in scouting for 49 years so all the training and everything that that I've been through has really, it really paid off that day. One little girl was like, oh man, Mr. Sparling, he's so kind-hearted. And I said, yeah, sometimes he comes off like a grizzly bear, but he's really a teddy bear. And I said, he's there, so he's gonna be okay. I said, Mr. Sparling's in charge. He, the, the guy's gonna be all right. I said, if anybody can do anything, it's him. You know, he held it together for all of us so well. And I think that's what he does all the time, that he's, um, you know, He's such a good role model and a leader for the kids and the staff. It's just wonderful to see someone who thinks nothing of being selfless showing children what a true role model should be. The firefighters called and said that, you know, they're in stable condition and I I did. I <laughs> I just thank the Lord that they were alive. And, you know, got myself back together and went on the rest of the day. I know it was a difficult situation for the kids to encounter, like, you know, what they came across that day. But at the same turn, when you have someone like Randy, who is in their charge, who is, you know, there to, to help them and to to mentor them, you know, as an educator or, or in whatever capacity. You've got the right person for the job. The entire time, the thing that I remember the most about Randy is he was constantly pointing, doing, communicating, talking, uh, in a very calm, strong voice. It was quite a relief, um, especially to know that someone like that was there to help me. When I got to school on Monday, they, uh, I must have had 70 or 80 kids run up to me in the hall and say, Mr. Sparling, Mr. Sparling, are they okay? A couple of the kids said, well, what can we do? What can we do? And I mean, they wanted to try to do a fundraiser. They wanted to do something for them. You know, we came up with making a poster, making a couple posters to put in each one of the rooms at the hospital and letting the kids sign them. And then, then all of a sudden, handmade cards started coming in. The kids were dropping them off at my office all day. And hopefully the kids learned, you know, that you can do good things and, and there are good people in the world. Well, uh, board members, Randy is here tonight with us along with his wife, Patty. And we're also joined by Salem principal, Dr. Smith, and the teachers who were on board that school bus with Randy that morning, Mary Warren, Beth Nyden, and Darlene Sable. Could y'all just stand up so we can say thank you? I know I speak for everybody when I say that you didn't just save a man's life. You clearly impacted the lives of dozens of students that day as they watched you, as they took comfort in your presence that day, as they saw what it means to be prepared and to be calm and to be of service in a crisis. I also uh, hope people understand you're not going to meet anybody more humble than Randy. Um, he truly is one of the good guys. And as I understand it, Randy, you had to be a little compelled to share your story with us and uh, probably with some of the media that were tracking you down after that. 
I also loved a story that we did hear from Dr. Smith. He shared with us that as any good staff member on a field trip would do, he called, uh, Randy called him that morning, let him know there'd been an accident, but the kids were safe and they were all gonna get to Bush Gardens and they were gonna be there on time. And that was literally all he said. <laughs> and so Dr. Smith met up with the group later that afternoon and then the other teachers had to tell him that what Randy had done. And so Jim went up to Randy and said basically something like, Hey, uh, did you leave out any details from <laughs> this morning? And even then, he was downplaying his actions and keeping his focus, as I understand it, on soaking the kids with the giant water cannons at Bush Gardens. So um, we're really proud to have you in our division working with staff, and we're proud for everything that you've done, not only in this instance, but everything you do for the Salem High School community. You, as, as, uh, as Dr. Smith said, you're a legend, but um, really, I'm sorry, Salem Middle School. Um, you're a legend, but one of the one of the good guys, and uh, we appreciate you. You all can find Randy's story on vbschools.com or on our blog, The Core, along with all of our other Compass Keepers. So thank you, Madam Chairwoman. That completes my report. Thank you, Dr. Spence. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers on agenda items this evening? Not on agenda items. Thank you. Thank you. The chair will now entertain a motion to approve our minutes from the May 8th meeting with the clarification that was provided to you earlier this, this afternoon. The motion is made by Ms. Riggs, seconded by Ms. Holtz. The voting board is open. The motion is approved. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda for this evening. The motion is made by Ms. Manning, seconded by Mrs. Melnick. The voting board is open. The agenda has been approved. The consent agenda has several items this evening. Item A has two course proposals that, that Mr. Uh, Dr. Pohl explained during the information part of our May 8th meeting. Item B includes the legislative proposals that we heard at our May, meeting on May 8th as well. Item C is the recommendation of the general contractor for Ocean Lakes High School and Corporate Landing Middle School's painting. And item D is a religious exemption, and, and item E includes recommendations from the Policy Review Committee for Policies. Policies 3-89, General Contract and Execution Policy, Policy 5-1, Extent of School Authority, Policy 5-6, Student Parent Guardian Appeals, Regulation 5-6.1, Appeals and Appeals and Appeals Procedures, Disciplinary Actions. Um, Regulation 5.6, 5-6.2, Appeals and Appeals Procedures, Non-Disciplinary Actions, Policy 5-58, Student and Staff Welfare. The Chair will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion is made by Mrs. Manning, seconded by Mrs. Holtz. The voting board is open. Consent agenda has been approved. The first item under action is the personnel and administrative appointments. The chair will entertain a motion to approve item A, personnel report and administrative appointments. Motion is made by Mrs. Rye, seconded by Ms. Melnick. Is there discussion? The voting board is open. Personnel report and administrative appointments have been approved. Dr. Spence, would you like to introduce our new administrator? I would. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. <clears throat> if I could ask Melissa George to please stand. You all hopefully will recognize Ms. George. She has been a teacher not only in Norfolk Public Schools, but here in Virginia Beach at Corporate Landing Middle School. She served as a school improvement specialist and administrative assistant. And most recently, for the last six years, as assistant principal at Kempsville High School. And this evening, I'm pleased that you've accepted our recommendation for Melissa to serve as the next principal at Kempsville High School. Congratulations. Thank you. And I understand you have some guests with you. I do. I have my husband, Rick, and my mom, Kathy, and I'm determined to be here. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Oh. 
So, Ma Madam Chairman, just a couple of thoughts. Number one, thank you to all of the family members for being here, being an administrator, particularly a high school principal, is a job that requires a lot of support, and so we're, we're grateful for that. Um, I think it's also appropriate at this time if we recognize the reason we're celebrating, Melissa, is because of the retirement of an outstanding administrator and Bill Harris, who's also here in the room, having served for the last how many years, Bill, now? Six, Six years at Kempsville High School as its principal. So, Bill, just a congratulations to you and thank you for your service. Madam Chairwoman, that's it. Thank you, Dr. Spence. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the general fees schedule for fiscal year 2018-2019. The motion is made by Mrs. Holt, seconded by Mr. Edwards. Is there discussion? Mrs. Weems. I support everything except for the section of our employees who have their children coming to our schools. <laughs> I think it should be even lower than what we have it now, um, perhaps a flat fee so that we don't have to, you know, keep going back and forth. But I think that's just a, a, just a nice thing to do for our employees who don't live in the city and who work here and, and want their children to go to the same school system that they work in. And it's not, you know, to them, it's, it's a lot of money, especially if they have multiple children to us, it, you know, on a scale of our budget, it really is hardly any money at all. So um, as just a little extra perk for our employees, I um, won't support it just because of that section. Would you like to make an amendment? Yeah, it could, could we, um, could we pull that out and discuss it separately? Or shall I, I make the motion to approve everything except for the general fee schedule for the, um, I don't know what it's called here. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that too. I'll, I'll move to keep the fees the same for our employees who have their children here. So you're making a motion to amend to keep the fees the same, same. as they were this past year? Yes. Do you have a second? Mrs. Melnick has seconded. <clears throat> Is there discussion on the amendment? I just would like. Just quick clarification. So approval of the grades that were already approved for 1718. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just not increase them at all. Keep them frozen again. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Mrs. Manning? I, I don't have that in, in front of me because I couldn't get my computer to work. Um, is that so is does that is that gonna affect our policy three dash twenty two that's coming up next? Yeah, that was Gonna be my next question. Do okay. we need to? Because that's because um... the policy is going to call for an incremental increase every year, and so the question, Cami, would be: They haven't technically adopted the new policy yet, so they could do this first and then. Well, adopt the new let policy. me point out: If you know. look at Section B, what it actually says, because we anticipated that it may not be agreement, was for non-resident employee students, the tuition fees will be calculated based on the current year's tuition fees plus annualized inflation rounded to the nearest $10 based on the most recent consumer price index CPI or as otherwise approved by the school board. So I think if you approve this and get all the same, I think you'll be okay with that. Um, how, have, how has the current increase been figured? It, has it been by inflation? The proposed increase or what was approved proposed, for last year? It, the proposed increase was actually figured based on what was in the policy. I, Farrell, you want to tackle that? It was based on the the uh, consumer price index, and it was 2.4%. So it was a current year plus 2.4%. That's okay. how we calculate. Okay, thank you. I, just for info, so the half day kindergarten would, would have increased by forty dollars, and the thirty six hundred dollar uh, elementary full day would be ninety dollars increase, and the secondary would be a hundred percent. That, that's the amount. Of right. Thank you, Fair. Do we have any other discussion? Mr. McDonald. So in, uh, Mr. Hunziker, correct me if I'm wrong. So right now is the policy, 
before we change the policy or if we change the policy right now the recommendation the recommendation that comes to us annually is this is the price of the students who attend and you give us that price and then we've been freezing it for x number of years correct and so the only difference that the proposed policy which these numbers are coming from does is say we're not going to give you the actual cost level with everyone else that's paying a tuition but we're going to take well, your frozen rate plus cpi and move on from there correct so that's that's really the only change that's happening but we're i just have this fear that we're going to keep coming back and it's like no we're not going to do that we're going to freeze it we're going to freeze it and yeah. you know if, if if the board i mean i agree with with mrs weems if that's what we're going to do then that's just what we we should do i suggested the policy so we don't have to wring our hands every time that this comes up and say no we're going to freeze it and so forth i'd rather have a policy in place that just says this is what we're going to do so um so i guess my point is you know if if when we do a vote on on this if the board is opting to freeze it then that's just what the policy update needs to say and that's the bottom line for me and that's fine with me too well when we get when we get there that's yes, another right, thing. Right. when we get there so mrs tax. rye yeah can we please clarify what we're voting on right now yeah. okay we're clarifying on a vote to to um keep the fees the same for teachers children the children of staff employees employees not just teachers but employees in our school system to keep the fees the same as they were last year so just to clarify that it's not fees it's the non-resident student right. tuition i'm sorry right. tuition yes teachers will still pay keep the tuition the same it. as it was last year for employees uh, children but we're not voting on the policy right now we're voting not on yet. the schedule this is this is, this is the amendment so if somebody is in agreement with a cost of live uh, an inflationary increase then there would be a no vote correct, correct. just to clarify if you think we should go ahead with the 2.4 percent increase then you would vote no if you agree that we keep um if we freeze the tuition for Hans, I just made clear, you keep referring to last year. You want it this school year, so I think you need to be specific if that's what you're 17, saying. 17, 18, Correct. Not last year, as you were mentioning last year. Uh, somebody up there said, you want to make sure you're oh, clear. For this year, year, okay. I'm sorry. So, are we clear on what we're voting on? Do you vote no? Mr. Edwards, go ahead. Farrell, can you... Uh share with us the amount of the discount that's already in place between the full amount and the uh, the amount that's being paid this year which is the proposed freeze do you have that number with you I don't have it it's different numbers uh, one of them is about a thousand dollars and one of them is about eight hundred dollars one's about between six and seven I'll send that information to the board it's already discount yeah and and the proposed policy that which we're considering overriding if it's passed would uh, simply increase that by the cost of living basically keeping the uh, the, the amount of that discount the, the same is that correct yes sir okay okay to, clar to clarify, this is this is an amendment that would keep the tuition for our employees' children the same as it is currently. So, if you vote yes, that's Keeping it the that's same. in favor of um, of the amendment. If you vote no, it's against the amendment. Okay, any other discussion, Mrs. Manning? And just to clarify, our employees do already receive a discount, correct, for the tuition? Okay, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, this is a vote on the amendment. Voting board is open. then the amendment fails because it's a tie. Mm. Mm. Correct? Mm-hmm. 
We're back to the original. Any other discussion on the original? We're back to the 2.4% for all fees and tuitions, right? Or just tuition? Uh, no, it's it, it, the 2.4 is just how we calculated. That was the consumer price index, and that was how we calculated the increase in the non-resident uh, student tuition for our employees. And that's just, we did that based on the understanding we were bringing you a policy that reflected that, and there wasn't a reason to do a different kind of increase. Okay. Any other discussion? Mrs. Malnick? Um, did the original policy state unless it says unless otherwise noted yes so we do have the power to vote again when this comes up next year to, to keep to freeze it again mm -hmm. okay just wanted to clarify yes. any other discussion okay the voting board is open on the original i mean uh, the original motion Are we waiting? <laughs> Thank you. The motion. The motion has passed. The chair will entertain a motion to approve policy 3 22 tuition fees. The motion is made by. Is there someone to make the motion? Mrs. Melnick has made the motion, seconded by Mrs. Manning. Is there discussion? Do we have any questions? Would you like to clarify? Ms. Linetti, would you clarify, please? This is what we discussed at the last school board meeting. We, were, we Your current policy sets out general um, per capita cost requirements for this. What you did in the, the amendment to this policy will be to segregate out non-resident employees, non-resident, non-employee student tuition, that's one section, then non-resident employees, these students, and in particular, we segregate out the four non-resident employee students, the tuition fees will be calculated based on the current year's tuition fees, plus annualized inflation rounded to the nearest $10 based on the most recent consumer price index CPI or as otherwise approved by the school board. So what your concerns were last time, this still allows you to make a difference. What it does is set an actual fee or way for them to calculate it out so there's no, there won't be any confusion as to how we've calculated this in the future, but it always allows you the option every year when you approve the fees to change that. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, the voting board is open. <clears throat> the motion is passed. We're on item D. The chair will entertain a motion that the school board approve the establishment of an ad hoc committee to determine the future of an achievable, achievable dream academy. The committee will include at least four school board members, Dan Edwards, Sharon Felton, Carolyn Rye, and Carolyn Weems, with the school board chair as an ex officio capacity, along with administrators and community members as deemed appropriate. The committee will be chaired by a school board member as determined by the ad hoc committee and the committee's findings and recommendations will be presented to the school board in December of 2018. Is there, Mrs. Felton has made the motion, Mrs. Riggs has seconded. Is there discussion? Mr. Edwards. I think it's uh, important for the public. Uh, we're, we're dealing with the uh, uh, physical plant of, you know, wh where we're going to locate the secondary version. I mean, sort of nebulous as, as stated on the agenda, the, the future of. The, f the future of Achievable Dreams is, is uh, positive and appreciated by the board that we are uh, dealing with the most appropriate location for its secondary school. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, the voting board is open. The 
The motion is passed. Under information, the first item under information this evening is the notification of intent to apply for federal grants. Welcome. Welcome. Good evening, Chair Anderson, Vice Chair McDonald, members of the board, and Dr. Spence. My name is Leslie Hughes, and I'm an Executive Director in the Department of Teaching and Learning. This evening, I will provide you with an overview of the 2018-2019 federal grant applications. Federal grant guidelines require school board approval of grant applications. This slide provides an overview of the past, current, and projected funding amounts for each grant. Actual award amounts will be announced in the fall. The Title I Part A grant is anticipated for just over $11.9 million. Funds provide additional financial assistance to schools with high numbers or high percentages of children from low-income families to help ensure that all children meet challenging state academic standards. The application includes continued funding of full-day kindergarten and Title I schools, as well as funding for pre-K support staff and resources. The grant application also supports instructional staffing allocations, professional learning, and family engagement. <coughs> The Title I Part D, Neglected, Delinquent, or At Youth Risk Grant, is anticipated for just over $272,000. The purpose of this grant is to improve educational services to neglected and delinquent students under the age of 21 in correctional facilities and to other at-risk populations to prepare, prepare them for secondary school completion, training, employment, and further education. In addition, the fund supports students in transitioning from the Virginia Beach Juvenile Detention Center back to VBCPS, including the Renaissance Academy. The Title II Part A grant is anticipated for just over $1,600,000. The purpose of this grant is to increase academic achievement for all students through improving teacher quality. As a result, the grant will fund 18 literacy leaders or math specialists in elementary, middle, and high schools. The Title III Part A grant is anticipated at just over $100,000. This grant is utilized to fund the salary and benefits of an English learner instructional specialist. This specialist will assist ESL and classroom teachers with instructional support and provide professional development. The Title IV Part A grant is anticipated at just over $2,980. Funds are intended to improve students' academic achievements by increasing the capacity of school divisions to provide all students with access to a well-rounded education, improve school conditions for student learning, and increase the use of technology in order to improve the academic achievement and digital literacy of all students. Funding will be used to assist low-income students with AP testing fees, provide resources for the ESL program, support the Positive Behavior Intervention Strategies program, support graduation labs for Kempsville High School and Bayside High School, and provide Wi-Fi hotspots within targeted areas of the city. At this time, the grant coordinators and I would be happy to answer any questions. And if I will, I'll take a few moments to introduce all of the grant coordinators because they are the ones that do all the work. So Tina Alsop, you all will stand up. Tina works with Title I Part A. She's our Title I director. Kay Thomas and Chip Larkin. Um, Kay Thomas, obviously, is the director of our Renaissance Academy. They do Title I Part D. Monica Robinson, who's one of the coordinators in teaching and learning, does Title II Part A and Title IV Part A. And Renee Collier does <laughs> Title III Part A. And then Tiffany Jacobs is the glue that holds us all together. She's our grants coordinator. <laughs> Thank you all for all of your work. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the board? Mrs. Manning. Well, first, I don't envy your positions, you guys. I, reading through all of this, and I did read every page, um, it was a little overwhelming for me. Uh, but thank you for what you do. Um, I had a question on the Title IV, I believe it was Title IV Part A. Um, I read in there that money can be allotted for health and safety. Um, but I wasn't, it wasn't clear to me how much could be allotted and what we're using that for. Can that be used for school safety? Hello, yes, part, a portion of that money can be used for school safety practices. Um, no more than 15% can be allocated for any um, particular area. 
Okay, so 15% of the 298,000 could be used for school safety, and how are we using that? Um, we're using that portion for to support the positive behavior intervention strategies program. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We have any other Mrs. Rye? Yes, it's just uh, great each year to get more insight into it's it's collectively about 14 million give or take right no small chunk of change and a, a lot of it is tedious work we realize <laughs> um, but just again on behalf of all of us thank you all any others thank you our next item under information is the interim financial statements for april 2018 mrs pate welcome thank you Good evening, Chairwoman Anderson, Vice Chairman McDonald, School Board members, <coughs> Dr. Spence. As of April 30th, the overall revenue trend remains acceptable at this point this school year, as illustrated by the first graph. Um, we have confirmed our actual March 31st ADM. It has come in slightly higher than our budgeted. Um, that resulted in a reduction of our overall state revenue um, from about $345,000 down to about $68,000 shortfall. Federal revenues continue to remain acceptable. Um, however, we do not expect any additional impact aid payments by June 30th. Um, so it is possible that we will end the year with a uh, unfavorable trend in that area. Sales tax receipts continue to remain on an acceptable trend as illustrated in this next graph. Year to date through April, we are approximately $620,000 higher than last year. And then for May, we are seeing an increase of approximately $238,000 um, compared to May of last year. The final graph shows our expenditures and encumbrances trend. And again, this contains remains to be acceptable at this point in the fiscal year. That concludes the presentation. We'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. That concludes our formal part of our meeting this evening. I'm sorry, I did I did overlook that. Do we have any standing committee reports? Mr. Edwards. The uh, audit committee met last week and uh, we reviewed a, uh, a few audit uh, re reports from uh, school activity fund and, and bookkeeper change out audits, but uh, no, nothing terribly exciting, but they are all there on our um, SharePoint if any of the, uh, our colleagues want to review them. Okay, any other standing committee reports? Okay, now that concludes the formal part of our meeting.